So hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is the second part in a series of videos that I've done looking at my reasons for buying a full frame camera and specifically in this part why I chose the Sony A9. So without further ado, let's go back to the future or should I say the past. So why did I choose the Sony A9? Like I said, a seven year old full frame mirrorless camera in 2024. As I said earlier, it's not been a quick process this for me deciding what full frame camera to try. And as I talk about, you know, in, in the next section, I've flip flopped around the various options before settling on the A9. And then I've gone off that and, and come back to it. But, but I've definitely feel like I've settled on the A9. Well, I hope I, I'm settled because as you've seen, I've, I've actually bought the camera. It was partly held by the fact that I had a little bit of a windfall. So where I was probably looking at six, 700 pounds for a camera body, I could then in effect double that budget to, to get something which would better suit my needs. And the, the pricing of the Sony A9 has definitely helped in the decision making process because what with the recently released Sony A9 Mark III, that has massively decreased the prices on the used market of the Sony A9 Mark II and of its original, the Sony A9, which I have indeed bought. I think when this camera was released, certainly in the UK, it was about four and a half thousand pound. I picked it up used last week for about 1200, which, and you can get them cheaper. I just wanted to get one which didn't look like it had been used much. And certainly my Sony A9 looks in tip top condition. As I said earlier as well with this camera, Sony has really pushed the boundaries in terms of what this camera is capable of from its original release in 2017, people would probably argue it is a very much more capable camera in 2019, which still holds true today in 2014, certainly with the improvements to its autofocus system, bringing in real-time eye autofocus tracking, and then in its last major update back in 2019, animal eye autofocus tracking. So what steered me towards the A9? And like I said, again earlier, I really didn't want to get the Sony A9 system because I like cameras that I feel that I connect with that make me want to pick up and use them and, 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 and which would introduce some more fun into my photography. And I'm not really sure that the Sony A9 would, would do that. Obviously time will tell when I start using the camera and buying some lenses. So, but the other reasons that exists for getting this camera, I feel certainly outweighed my initial hesitation of buying a Sony camera in the first place. So there are very clear benefits to why I bought this camera and hopefully will help me overlook the fact that I'm not sure the color science is gonna be as good as perhaps the Canon and the Panasonic offerings. I'm also a little bit worried about the ergonomics of the camera for it being so small. You can obviously see now my, my little finger has got nothing to hold on to. And from the limited time I've had using the camera, my top finger does seem to rub a little bit on the grip. But hopefully as I get used to holding the camera moving forward, I can find a happy medium. And then like I said, the other concern with buying this camera is that I'm just not gonna gel with it. But as I said, the, the benefits of owning an A9, I, I think could potentially outweigh the negatives. So what are those benefits? The main reason for getting this camera even seven years after its release is its AF capabilities and its ability to cannily track subjects and keep them in focus until you decide when to press the shutter. And as I said, they've updated the AF system. So even now in 2024, I'm hoping that it's still up there with the top cameras for its AF system. And don't get me wrong, there are cameras out there that do offer great subject detection. What seems to be the problem though with those cameras is that whilst they might detect the subjects, that might not necessarily translate into acquiring focus and then capturing that moment when you decide to take 
the shot and certainly I really wanted to like the Lumix S5 system maybe not the S5 II because I think they've gone a bit too towards the video market but certainly the original Lumix S5 did did appeal to me but I just felt that its AF system was not as good as other mirrorless full frame cameras partly because they weren't using phase detect which is supposed to be a lot better for tracking subjects so and as well it only had a burst mode in continuous autofocus at five frames per second so that's even worse than my olympus em1 mark one which does have phase detect so i wasn't really sure that i was going to gain much in autofocus by getting the lumix s5 Right, so kind of linked into that AF system, what's the point of having an AF system if you can't do a good burst rate for capturing the moments of your subject doing whatever it's doing? So the Sony A9 also allows you to shoot with the right lens attached to it, so like the 85mm f1.8, 20 frames per second with blackout free shooting. So it doesn't like show you the previous image captured or just blackout it just shows you a live view through the entire burst which is incredibly useful for when you're tracking your subjects moving where you can again you, you can position the camera to capture the composition and the moment you want or hopefully that's the theory anyway quite easily compared to other cameras that don't have such a good system for their burst rates and that blackout view finder and that's partly down to the fact that the sensor, the 24 meg sensor in the Sony A9 has a stack sensor. So it has a lot more capability to be able to do that. The other big thing that drew me towards the E-mount system was the amount of lens options available. Like, like I said earlier, I haven't really invested in a full frame system yet so i'm starting from scratch i've got no old nikon or canon lenses in the cupboard other than a couple cheap options for the canon 5d so the fact that sony have got so many different options both native and third party is a real big plus in my mind and those lenses cater for different budgets, you can obviously go for the Grandmaster Sony lenses, you can go for expensive Sigma art lenses, or you've, other, you've got other manufacturers from the likes of Tamron, Samyung, etc., etc., to help you decide and, or give you options of what lenses that you would like to try, as well as manual focus lenses from Zeiss and Voigtlander. Whereas if you were to go with the Canon system, you're extremely limited in terms of lens options for particular focal lengths and just their price because there's no third party options their lenses seem to be extremely expensive and i guess that the one saving grace with the canon r mount system is that you can get the ef to rf adapter so you can use if you've got it all your old l mount glass in your canon ef system on your new camera relatively seamlessly and i think if i did have some more canon glass in my locker i probably would have considered canon a little bit um better but as such i felt that it was going to be very expensive going into the canon system and likewise for the nikon system as well whereas they've got very very few third party options so that was one of the big reasons I went for Sony, just the, the amount of lenses for all different budgets and styles of photography that you could possibly want. And I've even bought a Sigma MC11 adapter again, so I can try my EF lenses on the Sony A9 and see whether it performs better than the Sony A7S, which took about three to five seconds to lock and acquire focus with using the EF lenses on that particular camera. And sometimes it didn't even lock at all. It didn't even lock on my 50mm f2.5 Canon EF lens. So I'll be really interested to see how well the MC11 adapter works on the A9 because it might steer me towards what lenses I want to try next or whether I need any more lenses at the present 
time. So obviously the next um, good thing with the Sony A9 is it's full frame. So it helped me to achieve that full frame look in my images compared to my crop sensor cameras. And whilst, again, this is probably one thing that held me back in the fact that the A9, because it's built for more speed, for more sports and wildlife photographers, it probably lacks a little bit in the dynamic range capabilities compared to other mirrorless cameras. Certainly the Lumix again, the S5 and the Canon R6 and the Nikon cameras, they do have a little bit more ISO range, certainly in the low ISOs, which, which would be beneficial for landscape photography. But I just feel that's another good thing with the Sony system. Like if I feel that I'm getting on with the E-mount system, I can easily add like an A7R, which, which I would use then for more landscape oriented photography and then be able to share the lenses between that camera and then my A9 as well. Again, another benefit of the Sony A9, and I will get out again to, to demonstrate, is that even though a hybrid camera sounds nice in that I can have one camera to do my photography and my videoing needs. So having a camera with an articulated screen would be, I say articulating a fully articulated screen. So like with the Osmo Pocket, I'd be able to see myself recording a video. But because I, I only really do vlogs occasionally compared to photography. And I've found in the past that an articulated screen is not, not the best for my style of photography. So the fact that the Sony A9 has a traditional tilt screen is a real positive in my books. But like I said, it wasn't a deal breaker, but again, it was another benefit that helped steer me towards the Sony a9. Right, so other lesser things that help steer me towards the Sony A9, it's obviously got a 24 meg sensor. So again, the Canon R6 has only got 20 meg. So that extra four meg might allow me some more cropping ability. This camera also has, as I've experienced on the A7S, you can magnify into your view and use focus peaking at the same time if you're using manual focus lenses to help you achieve that critical focus. I know the Canon R6 has magnification and focus peaking, but you can't use them both at the same time. So that's great that you can with the A9. The other good thing with the Sony A9 with having lots of options for lenses, like for instance, if you've got a dedicated Voigtlander E-mount lens, it has the contacts which would tell the camera its focal length for like the IBIS system. And then also as well, the EXIF data will show up in your images. And the other cool thing that the E-mount system would allow you to do, as soon as you start manually focusing those lenses those manual focus lenses with electrical contacts, it automatically engages magnification, which I think will really help to better achieve that critical moment that you want to capture. And also it does have IBIS. Okay, it's not gonna be the best IBIS out there, and I'm pretty sure that every other brand out there does better IBIS than Sony, but it's still better to have some than none at all. And another good thing I think with the Sony is because it's got a PASM dial, it's also got the ability to make custom selections. So hopefully I can set it up like my Olympus cameras where if I select like three, that would be ready for shooting pictures of my dog running towards me. Whereas if I select uh, two, that might be good for when I'm using it on a tripod. And then equally for one, just for general, general out and about photography. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to setting the Sony A9 up. Right, so that's the end of this part. So thanks for watching. Bye for now.